You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots. You know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I deliver it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof of your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest and repeat offender. Mary Walters is in the house. Welcome. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or ronsingleradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are some operators standing by. We had to, we had to switch that one a little bit because, yes, <laughs> indeed, we do. I, I can't answer while I'm on the broadcast. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Well, I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan, a plan to save you money. I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800 306 1990, and yes, we are celebrating today, National Thesaurus Day. Uh, not for me. How about Winnie the Pooh Day? Uh, I'm probably a little old for that one, too. It is what it is. National Peking Duck Day. I like that one. You got a great picture there today of, the, of, uh, of Peking Duck, too. I like that picture. Where do you go for good Peking duck? I my wife doesn't really like Chinese food. Uh, I do. When I was in China, though, if you, it, it's a little bit different. So you go there and they serve you. They bring the whole duck, head, everything. So it's sitting there staring at you. I, yeah, wasn't most of the food in China. The whole idea was if you don't can't identify it, don't eat it. Just throw that out there. Now, Peking duck. Let's see what the markets are doing today. Do we want to know what the markets are doing? The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 550 points. Ow! Yeah, that's painful. S&P 500 down 74. NASDAQ down 276. Oil up another $1.43 a barrel. About half of the Dow Jones drop is, is attributed to... Goldman Sachs. Yeah, Goldman Sachs missed their earnings report. I don't know how that happens with a company that big, but they're 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 responsible probably a quarter to a half of the drop in the Dow just from Goldman Sachs. So we're watching that one, seeing what's going on there. With with interest rates going up, you would think that that would be well, it is good for Goldman Sachs. They make more money as interest rates go up. So we're gonna continue watching that one as well. But should we take a look and see what it did to gas prices now? Gas oil all the way up to 85.25 a barrel. 85.25 a barrel. I don't know if we even want to look at what it was a year ago. Should we, should we take a look at that one? 85.25 now. A year ago, we were looking at about, uh, that's got a one day chart. I got to look at the one year. How about two year chart? Should we look at two year chart? So we got down as low as 22.76 a barrel. And this time last year, we were at about $48 a barrel. Can you say Biden tax? And I know only people making over $400,000 a year, they're the only ones that are paying this. But, oh, wait a second. Maybe the rest of us are having to pay this one too. I, I'm just checking. Louisiana is not participating. Lori's got it made. 304 a gallon over there. So that's our tremendous underwriter. 304 a gallon for Lori. Jody, our newest team member, 358 a gallon in Arizona. Josh, you're at 381. That's down a little bit, not as bad as we are in the formerly Golden State. $4.65 a gallon. Ow! $4.65. Now, think about this. The state makes, the higher the gas price goes, the more money the state makes. 
right? Because we're paying 20, about 25% tax in California. So at $3 a gallon, the state's getting 75 cents. At $5 a gallon, the state gets a buck and a quarter. Just think about that. So which way do you think the politicians want this gas to go? I know, I know, they're they're out there with the Oh, no, wait a second. They've probably got their electric vehicles and their gas cards so the taxes so the the taxpayer is paying for their gasoline. Uh, good for thee and not for me. I guess that's the mantra of the of the politicians, especially here in the formerly Golden State. What else is going on? Let's keep on moving right through the the new the news cycle. Should we look and see what else is going on in the news? There's a lot of craziness right now. The, the Democrats are upset at the new Virginia governor, and it's something that Democrats are not usually, you know, they're not used to this. So the governor is doing what he said he was going to do. That surprises Democrats. They don't usually like that idea. They don't do that. They they basically say one thing and then do whatever they want once they get into office. But he said he was going to return the power to the parents and get rid of critical race theory. But Michigan, Michigan's out there. They're going to keep on going the same as they've been doing. Parents have no rights. They should not be telling the schools what to teach the kids. Does that make sense to anybody? Am I, am I missing something here? I'm a big believer, have been for a long time in the voucher system. It forces the teachers and the schools to really teach the kids what the parents want taught because the, the money, tax dollars, follows the student. So if mom and dad want their kids to go into XYZ school, XYZ school gets the money that mom and dad uh, have coming for their, for their student. I, I love that idea, right? I mean, why wouldn't we want to do it that way? It's called competition, right? And it'll make everybody, every all education better. That's the whole idea of it. It's not to take from one or to give to one. But if a school isn't getting the job done, if they're not able to teach the kids or if they're not able to communicate it in a way that those kids understand and need, well, move right along. Let's get give it to the parents to say, you know something? And I did this, right? Two of my kids went to one high school. One went to another high school. The, the, the one that the first two went to didn't have the programs that could teach our third the things that he needed. So we went where they could find it. Ah, moving right along. Uh, Bill de Blasio, not going to run for governor. Is that about the best news we've ever heard? Right? I mean, New York doesn't need another communist over there. They, Blasio already ruined the city of New York. I think he was thinking about ruining the whole state, but they, I guess they got rid of that one. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, Rand Paul's out there in the news again, giving a report on revealing the troubling impact of rising inflation. Do we really need a report on that? Can anybody tell? I mean, you look at some of the, the pictures of different groceries. Have you gone to the grocery store and found that they're out of product? Now, I am uh, time sensitive. Is that the right? Is, is, that, is, that a, is that a good way of saying lazy? So I, I like to save money. So I place an order. My wife gets mad at me every time. I place an order with Walmart. And I tell them what I want. I have to have it delivered to the house out of eggs. Now, can you imagine Walmart being out of eggs? I mean, it's one of those. Then I have right on there that they're more than they, they can go in and substitute. So, you know, thank goodness I didn't. Well, I shouldn't say that. But I didn't get any eggs. So I wonder what other products these stores are out of. And I see on the app lots of things out. But there's no supply chain, no supply chain issues, according to the president. Now, it will be fascinating. The president's going to do a press conference tomorrow. He has done, uh, I think it's about a year since he's done. Surprise, it. surprise, surprise. Anybody have any questions about who's going to be the ones uh, offering the questions? I think they'll probably have to, it's kind of like going to, to one of his town halls. They probably have to turn in the question. Somebody's going to pick which questions they're going to ask. They'll probably give him a teleprompter with the answers. No follow-ups, please. Is that called a press conference or is it just uh, a staged? Wait a second. In this administration, it probably is a staged event. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, we've got the monthly market report. We're going to go over that today. Sellers, don't wait until spring to make your move. And here's a fascinating story. 
My credit met the minimum requirement. Why was I denied? All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Off air number 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel went on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mortgage connection. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Homeowners over the age of 62 are taking back financial control after retirement with reverse mortgages, and the Siegel Lending Team is here to help you use it to your advantage. Call Ron Siegel with Geneva Financial to receive your free information booklet with no obligation. The booklet answers all your questions, and the best part is you still own your home. Call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990 or visit ronsiegelradio.com. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Dow Jones now down 556 points. NASDAQ down 291 points. The, I'm sorry, that's the NASDAQ down 291. The S&P is down 66. 10-year Treasury is up three basis points to 1.845. The mortgage-backed security is down 39 basis points, which means interest rates are a climbing. And we've been talking about this. It's been coming right along. We know that. But the question becomes, why is it happening? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you, National Association of Home Builders Housing Market Index decreased by one point from last month's revised figure of 84 to 83 in January. Current sales remain flat and sales expectations decreased by two points to 83. Buyer traffic decreased by two points to 69. That's interesting. The buyer traffic is down according to the National Association of Home Builders. Here's the issue though. And we've talked about this before. When we see the 10-year treasury going up the way it is now at a two-year high, and I, yeah, I get it. It's only at like 184, I think I said it was. Well, that just means that interest rates are going up. But here's the issue. The bond market does not really believe that the Federal Reserve is going to have the guts to go through with the three hikes they say they want. Some of the, some of the Fed members are saying they want even more hikes this year. So the yield curve is flattening. Now, here's the issue. The yield curve flattening generally tells us there is, when it, when it inverts, and I'm not going to get into all the specifics, tells us there is a, a recession on the way. Now, why do you think that the Federal Reserve is tightening the monetary supply when, and the, the flow of money when we know there's going to be a recession? And it's pretty simple to understand why there's going to be a recession. So here's the issue. The federal government has a, about a $4 trillion budget in a normal year. And the last two years have been anything but normal. 
So under the final year of Trump and the first year of Biden, they've added about five trillion to the budget each year through the through their COVID relief. So we had nine, just call it rounded off, nine trillion each year. Now, do you think they're going to get another five trillion in, in new spending to go through this year? I don't think so. So if they don't, if they go back to their four trillion spending numbers, well, that means that the federal government has cut 50% of their spending. And we've got about a $17 trillion economy. That's a third. And that means recession right there, right? Because GDP has to go down if you're not spending all that money. So why do you raise rates into the site, into the uh, eyes of a tightening, into, into a, a slowing economy? Well, it's only if you don't want to believe what you see because the economy is slowing. But some people don't want to believe that. That's the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva has the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990. Every month about this time, we are lucky enough to have Mary Walters come in and join us, bringing us the millennial view of the monthly market report. We get a report from our friends over at Keeping Current Matters every month. And it comes out right about the 10th. So Mary comes in generally the first of the, of the following week to talk to us about a different perspective, right? Because I get the old man perspective. So first slide that they sent us, is it possible that rising mortgage rates will slow the housing market or the Fed might raise rates sooner than expected due to the recent pickup in inflation? But I believe one thing is certain, inventory will tell the tale. That's according to Bill McBride, founder of Calculated Risk. What do you see on an inventory? It's still low, 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 low. So, still, <laughs> and, and are, what about the time on market? Is that changing at all? Even lower. Even lower. I think the report that I got for Orange County, I want to say it was twenty-five days was average right now. Wow. Which was lower than it was a couple months ago when we were talking. So low inventory, and so like the buyer demand is still there. Yes. Is it fear of missing out? A little bit, yeah. You know, a lot of times when and a lot of people who already have been missing out, they're still just trying and trying. Oh, yes. so the people that have been making offers and getting outbid. Yes, I hear that a lot. So you're still seeing that. Yes. Okay. Listing. Oh, what do you know? Listings are at record lows. That's the next slide that we have right there. Housing inventory lower than la lower than last year. Mm -hmm. Wow. California is down 27.8 percent year over year from December 2021 to December 2020. 27.8. That's a that's a pretty pretty big number. It is. Right? And nationally is 26.8. So California, well, Josh, you guys are down 29.9. So if you want to come back to California, Josh, which I doubt I can't I can't give you a good reason to come back, right? You got a lot of a lot of demand for housing out there. So do you see any catalyst? Do you see any change on the horizon for more properties coming out? Um, I mean, I'm hopeful that uh, there's a lot of people waiting. So I see, like, I saw a little bit right after the New Year's, there was a little bit of spike and then it's gone back down. Um, so I was thinking maybe a lot of people are just sort of waiting through the holidays and waiting till, you know, the New Year to sell. But it's still the same story that a lot of people who want to sell, they don't have anywhere to go because that's of... an interesting problem. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people are just holding on. Okay. And uh, now I'll, I'll throw the, uh, the biggie at you. Is anybody talking that, that they they started coming back on the market the first of the year, and then we got all the news coming out about how the world's coming to an end with Omicron? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's slowing anybody? I don't think so. Okay. I don't either. I just thought I'd get another perspective on – because I, I think most people in, in the old people are saying that, you know, it's just a bad flu, bad cold. Mm -hmm. They just put a different name to it. Young people were saying that before about the COVID, <laughs> COVID before, right? I've been saying that the whole time, but yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so nothing's nothing's really changed. Okay. Months of inventory of homes for sale, 2.1 months as of November, according to the National Association of Realtors. Now, I don't know where that is, right? Because you just said that the, the days on the market was 25. Mm -hmm. Well, that to me, 2.1 months means that it's about 60, 62. Yeah, well, the the twenty five was Orange County. This is more national, right? So maybe maybe some other areas they're staying on the market a little longer, but I I just don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, now you you 
you're looking Orange County mostly? Or? Yes. Okay. So, and I've seen some uh, Riverside and some San Diego County. They're basically the exact same thing. Showings are still strong greater than in November, not than last November. Okay, so this is coming from Showing Time. That's a part of Zillow. And they do this chart and show us that, and it's based on an index. So, you, you know, the numbers on the index is irrelevant. It, all, the only thing, the, the only relevancy is that the index is 10% higher than it was from the, uh, over the la over prior year. So a lot of people out there still looking. Yep. That's interesting. So people still want to buy or they want to move. Are you, are the people that you're seeing, and maybe you don't know this answer, but are the people that are out there looking to buy, are they looking to buy for investment purposes or are they looking to buy, buy to move up? And there's both. I definitely have seen a lot more investments and a lot more 1031 exchanges than I've ever seen. I mean, I haven't been. You better in... explain that one a little bit. Yeah. Not so... to, they're just from a high level. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've only been in the industry for since 2013. Oh, going on 10, almost, almost 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> almost 10 years now. Ugh. Wow. Um, but this is definitely, I've seen the most 1031 exchanges, meaning that an investor is selling one property and moving up into a bigger investment normally. So, for example, selling like a one bedroom condo and exchanging it for a fourplex. Oh, so so they want so now is that what really? I mean, I know that's an example, but is that what you're seeing that people are going to multifamily more? I've seen, yeah, I've seen a lot more people exchange into. So, investments. the the big benefit I think of that multifamily is it's it's less risky. It is right. Explain mm -hmm. explain that concept. Well, I mean, if you have like a one bedroom condo per se, if it's not rented out, you have zero income coming in. If you have a fourplex, maybe you have three rented out, at least you have 75% of an income it could generate. That's a, and that's a big issue. I mean, right. Because you don't want to, as time goes by three of them, three, three units rented out of a fourplex mm -hmm. might put you on a very strong cash flow. Mm -hmm. And then two, two units, then take the money out of it and buy some more. That's yeah. And if you're holding it for longer, you have more appreciation opportunity. If you hold it longer, you have more appreciation opportunity. Yeah, I mean it's worth more, so it's okay. going to appreciate faster. So you've got than more. Of, you've got more of a cumulative appreciation. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Total. <laughs> or it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's day after a you holiday. You understand feels me? Like it's, it feels like a Monday. Yeah, exactly. I've been there. Uh, showings crush pre-pandemic numbers. Wow. I didn't realize that the numbers that that we're seeing more people out there buying than before the pandemic, or out there looking mm -hmm. than before the pandemic. Pent up demand. Definitely. Right. So that's the whole issue right there is that people are still getting older. They're still getting uh, starting families. They're still having babies. And there's really no place for mom and dad to move to. Mm -mm. Right. So that's a big issue is if mom and dad can't move, then where's the, the first time home buyer going to push people? Exactly. It all starts with that first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. Right. Pushing the pushing the old people out of the way. <laughs> Michael Lane, VP and general manager of Showing Time. Showings traditionally lag during the holiday season, but the data we're seeing tells us that buyer demand remains strong. The fact that every region showed a year-over-year -year increase indicates that buyers are undeterred. It speaks to their desire to keep searching for their next home. So if they if they didn't win during the holidays, when the when the inventory is low and the sellers are motivated, mm -hmm. that's just going to roll over and be more cumulative there too. Yep. Right. So we haven't even got to the busy season. And I know some people around the world will say to us, well, you know, you don't have to worry about the summer selling season in California. You've always got good weather, which is true. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we did have rain one day this month. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, we, then that, that about covers the whole year for us. But the, the idea there is people are out there looking and they want to find something. And there's going to be more and more people because there are still a Still a couple of people that want to move to California. So a lot of us are moving out, but some are moving back in. And they might come here thinking that, you know, it's better to be here than the snow blizzards and the ice storms that they're seeing in the Midwest and East right now. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, sellers don't want to wait until spring to make your move. My credit score met the minimum requirement. Why was I denied? VA veterans, we've got a big show coming up for you tomorrow. So you're going to want to make sure and check that one out as well. You can reach me anytime. Our off air number 800 306 1990, 800 306 1990, or ronsegalradio.com. 
Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube, Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mortgage connection. Are you a renter and tired of making monthly payments? Paying off someone else's mortgage? Hey, it's Ron Siegel here to help you stop renting and start owning your dream home with amazing low interest rates. And you could potentially qualify for a... Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 0186945. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Sellers, don't wait until spring to make your move. That is the subject of today's real-time real estate segment. As you plan out your goals for the year, moving up to your dream home may top the list, but how do you know when to make your move? You want to time it just right so you can get the most out of the sale of your current house. You also want to know you're making a good investment when you buy your new home. What you may not realize is that opportunity to get the best of both worlds is already here. You don't wait. want to wait until spring to spring into action. The current market conditions make this winter an ideal time to move. Here's why. Number one, the number of homes on the market is still very low. Number two, your home equity is growing in record amounts. Number three, while rising mortgage rates are still historically low. Yeah, you want to make sure you get in there before the rates go up later this year. And they're going up now. Number four, home prices are going to keep rising with time. Bottom line. If you're considering selling the move up or downsize, this may be your moment, especially with today's low mortgage rates and limited inventory. Let's chat and get you on a game plan. I had lunch yesterday with a, a gentleman, and he was telling me that his kids are thinking about waiting to buy. And I said, he said, what would you say to him? I said, well, I think it's a good idea. Waiting is probably a good idea if you want to pay more money for the property, probably about 7 or 8% more money for the property, and if you want to have a higher payment because – Interest rates are going up. I don't know where they're going. Chapman says 3.9. I think probably closer to 3.75, but it doesn't matter. Some they're, they're going up. So if the idea is to wait for a high, the exact same house to be higher priced and the payment to be higher because your interest and in your monthly mortgage payment is higher, it's probably a good idea to wait. Other than that, maybe you want to act now. That's the real-time real estate segment, again, brought to you by the Area Trusted Real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Visit rsrhomedigest.com, rsrhomedigest.com. Continuing our conversation, the monthly market report with Mary Walters. We're chatting about this. We get this report every month and we go over it, look at it from the old man's point of view and the millennial perspective. Got a, a chart here or a comment here, 2021 Realtors Conference and Expo. The lack of insight uh, around home equity presents an opportunity for real estate professionals who are always looking for touch points with past clients. What does that mean? Well, in my opinion, I'm going to get Mary's as well, that there are a lot of real estate people in this market, in the marketplace. And I think we heard last week, there's 25,000 licensed realtors in Orange County, California alone. 25,000, a million four in the state of California. That's crazy. 
many of them are just transactional, right? Get my commission, I'm out of here. Well, I don't believe in that concept. I really like the idea of having all of your professionals be part of your life, right? Your realtor, you know, multi-generational. I'm old enough to have helped parents and their kids now get properties. You're not old enough for that one. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's, it's a great thing because constantly chatting. Now, are you, are you, are you seeing people that are really looking, looking for the ways of reaching out to their past clients, past database to see how they can help them with their, their wealth plans? Um, I mean, in our office, yes, because this is what we teach. So I'm not sure about everyone else out there, but in our office, 100%, like, this is what we teach. Why do you teach that? Well, because if you're not providing value to your clients, if you're not helping them make money, I mean, you are just a transactional agent. Like, you need to build that relationship and help your clients build wealth. And this is a way to do it is what kind of equity they have there. Can they refinance, pull cash out, and go buy the next property and invest? Now, we've talked about this many, many times. I think I did a show on this just uh, in the last couple of weeks. Think about the concept that if you are a millennial, if you are a young person and you buy that first property now, I hope that we don't see appreciation like we saw last year or the year before. It's not, not healthy for the market to be going up 18, per, you know, high double digits every year. If we get back to our five and a half, six percent, which is uh, the Orange County numbers, that's a healthy market because we've done it for 62 years on average. That's healthy. And then you talk about the leverage, right? If you're, if you're getting, putting 10% down, mm -hmm. you know, now you're looking at 50%, you know, uh, earnings on your, on your investment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take very long to take and take that money out and do it again. Yep. Right. And by the time you're 40, 45, 50, well, then you're able to say, do I want to work anymore? Or don't I want to work anymore? Mm -hmm. Right, that's the whole idea. Core Logic, third quarter homeowner equity report. Now, Core Logic does a great job of looking backwards. They do a horrible job of forecasting. My last year, I think it was, or the, maybe the year before, they said real estate was going to drop by six point six percent. Not just slow down, but it was going to go backwards by six point six. They only missed by about twenty five percent. But when we look at some of the numbers here. 31.1% year-over-year percentage increase in equity for U.S. homeowners with mortgages. That's a staggering number. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, think about that. I mean, we're, we're in, in Orange County, California with a $950,000 median home price. Mm -hmm. And you look at a 31% year-over-year increase in equity. Now, let's explain what the, that means. Right. So if you put if you bought that nine hundred fifty thousand dollar house and you put 10 percent down, I'm going to use a round number of one hundred thousand dollars because it's easy. That means your equity went up by thirty one thousand dollars. Right. I mean, your property went up thirty one thousand thirty one thousand on one hundred thousand. I can almost do the math on my head on that one. Right. That's pretty that's pretty good. Fifty on average not nationwide. $57,000 average home equity gain for U.S. homeowners. What about in California? Do we have that number for California? $119,000. $119,000. Mm -hmm. That's just from the third quarter of 2020 to the third quarter of 2021. So go back to the gentleman I had lunch with yesterday and his kids. Do you want to leave $119,000 on the table because you're waiting until the end of the year? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a curveball at you, Mary. Okay. So we're looking here year over year, one hundred nineteen thousand dollars. Would it be worth it to overpay for a piece of property today? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, if you have to pay, you know, fifteen twenty thousand over to get a hundred thousand, I'll do that all day. <laughs> Makes sense, right? I mean, it's just a trade off. So yeah, you maybe you're you're paying over market, and yes, we do have the appraisal gap program. RSR, I think it's rsrappraisalgap.com, rsrappraisalgap.com. So we can show you, I think I got right. Did I get that right, Josh? Yeah, there it is, rsrappraisalgap.com. So visit that site if you want to know how to beat that appraisal problem. So you don't, what is an appraisal gap? I guess I should explain that one, right? <laughs> yeah, go for it. So you got an, a, a property that you win the bid. You did exactly what Mary just said and you have a $500,000 condo, 
and you pay 550. The difference between 500 and, and the appraisal now is say that comes in at 510. Well, you've got a $40,000 appraisal gap. The difference between what you paid and what the appraisal comes in at. We've got a solution so you don't have to come up with that $40,000 and you can still buy the property. rsrappraisalgap.com. Frank Martel, president and CEO of CoreLogic. Not only have equity gains helped homeowners more seamlessly transition out of forbearance and avoid a distressed sale, but they've also enabled many to continue building. The, do you even hear about distressed sales? I have not. The, no. only place, the only place I ever hear about distressed sales right now is from consumers who think that we're going to have a big glut mm-hmm. of foreclosures and forbearance. And they're going to wait for it. Yeah, all the millennials just waiting on sidelines. <laughs> Well, okay, so you brought that up. <laughs> oh, you, no. you opened the door. Why is that? Well, again, like, so me as a millennial, the only big crash in market, you know, cycle I've been through is watch my parents do in 2008, where that's when we did see all those foreclosures coming on. Right. So all us youngins over here <laughs> saw it was going on. It was like, oh, it's going to crash. It's going to crash. It's going up too high. It's going to crash. We're just waiting for the crash. Well, it's because that's your only point of reference. Exactly. Right now. It is the job of real estate professionals like Mary and myself and Josh in the background to go in there and, and show us charts of what has happened on prior recessions, right? Because I remember a lot of recessions. You remember one, one. <laughs> <laughs> one. right? But Mary knows about the other ones because I've talked about them on the broadcast. Recession does not equal a drop in real estate values. Yes, it did by 19.7% in 2008 recession. But in 1980, real estate values went up 6.6% during that recession. And the other three recessions that have been in the last 40 years, real estate's down 1.9% on one of them and up the other, the others, right? So real estate goes up during recession. That's not something that most people talk about, most people understand, because you haven't experienced it. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go on a wild assumption here, Mary. You didn't spend as much time nerding in an economics classes as I probably did. Oh, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> she was smarter. She did not go into those economics classes and get bored to death. But that's where you study these kind of things. And nerds like me, that's what we do. What do you expect in the 2022 housing market? That's our chat about that one well mortgage rates we could probably guess that they're going to go up Mm -hmm. now this one here on average so if we look at freddie mac fannie mae mortgage bankers association and the national association of realtors they say 3.7 percent is the average for all that whole group i'll tell you i i'm thinking about that 3.75 chapman university in their forecast in december they came out and said 3.9 Okay, so 3.9% interest rate. Forbearances, uh, we, we've got a chart of this one. We could show it to you. But this one shows that forbearances are below a million. Mm-hmm. Now, I think there's a, I think I saw somewhere that there's about 140 million homes in the US. Less than a million, <laughs> right? Or have an active forbearance. Mm-hmm. Now, here's part of the issue here is there's some folks that got very, very lucky during the pandemic. There's about 400,000 homes that were in some sort of an active foreclosure going into the pandemic. And we know what happened there. They stopped. Yep. And then they got 30% appreciation. Yep. Probably weren't paying any payments. So now they've got, they probably have some equity, not all of that equity, Mm -hmm. but they've got some equity to go and try and sell their properties. Yep. Right. So get your head out of the sand. Right, call Mary, get an appointment to get get a, get an evaluation. What does it cost for an evaluation? Zero. That's a good price. I like that. One of my favorite. <laughs> one of my favorite expenses. Right, costs nothing to get an evaluation. What do you? What would? What would you or your team need to do an evaluation for somebody? What do they need to bring you? Um. Honestly, just give us the address. We'll start running comps and tell you what we think it's worth. Let us do a little walkthrough, see the condition of the property, and. We'll let you know. That's real tough, right? You need, a, <laughs> you need an ad. We well, need an address. They can figure out what the property value is once one of the professionals have done a walkthrough, and you may need your most recent mortgage statement to see what do you owe, right? Mm-hmm. That's about it. And then you get a 
professional equity analysis report. We just call it, that's just our fancy term for it. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. My credit scores met the minimum requirement. Why was I denied? Tomorrow, we've got our veteran special coming on. We're going to be talking about veteran loans, VA loans. Why is it the best loan on the market? And they've got a, a program in, within the veterans. I don't know if you know this one, Mary. The veteran loan, it doesn't have to appraise. If there's an, if the real estate professional can show you enough, can show enough reason why the value is there, the appraiser can be overridden. We'll talk about that. You can reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 radio.com Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mobile home for real connection are you earning a safe secure 10 plus percent return on your investments is your credit score over 800 are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford if the answer to any of these questions is no what are you doing about it text atp to 79564 complete a three-minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of ron siegel radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you again all you need to do is text atp to 79564. Are you a renter and tired of making monthly payments? Paying off someone else's mortgage? Hey, it's Ron Siegel here to help you stop renting and start owning your dream home with amazing low interest rates. And you can potentially qualify for a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket. So stop renting. Start owning with Ron Siegel. Learn more at ronsegalradio.com and start owning today. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. At 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Your Credit Matters segment today being brought to you by MySoCalLender.com. MySoCalLender.com. My credit score met the minimum requirement. Why was I denied? Having good or excellent credit can open up a lot of opportunities to save money, especially when you apply for a loan or credit card. Oftentimes, lenders will share their minimum FICO score requirement. However, just because yours meets that criteria, it does not guarantee that you'll be approved. Your FICO score, not the FACO score that you're getting from Credit Karma or Credit Sesame. The FICO score is the one that you really need. It is often one of the many factors that lenders consider in credit decisions. Mortgages have about 37 different items that go into pricing and qualification. So think about that. If you've been denied credit recently, despite meeting the FICO score criteria, here are some potential reasons for why it happened. Credit scores vary. When lenders pull a FICO score for a credit applicant, it may not be the score you thought you had. There are a few reasons for this scenario. You checked a different credit score. When you're checking your credit score, make sure you're looking at a FICO score. Lots of different banks and institutions put right on there that they're going to give you a credit score doesn't mean a thing if it's not FICO. Unless it says FICO, it's not FICO. While the scoring models might consider similar factors as the FICO score, their calculations are different and can sometimes lead to wide discrepancies. I've seen as many as 100 point differences from FACO scores to FICO scores. Your score was based on different information. Your FICO score is based on information found in your credit reports. But depending upon your, la your past and current credit relationships, 
and how you've been reported information can vary between the credit bureaus. So if you check your FICO score based on data from one bureau and the lender uses a different bureau, the same score pulled at the same time, but from different bureaus may and generally will come out different. The lender used a different scoring model. There are several different versions of the FICO score. And while the most widely used one is the FICO score eight, they're actually on 12 now. Some lenders may use others, although each, each score version is built on the same foundation. There are subtle differences that could impact your score. This means that while your FICO score may meet the minimum criteria using one version, it might not if the lender is using another version. Think of it as, I'm going to date myself again. Are you a Mac user or a Windows user? Windows. So what is it, Windows? I think they're at version 11 now? Yep. Is that the same as version nine, as Windows 95? No. <laughs> Same idea, right? So FICO 8 is the same as they say Windows 95. FICO 12 might be Windows 11. That's kind of the, the difference right there. Other factors are stopping you from getting approved. As previously, now FICO, I only use myfico.com and no, they don't pay me to use it. Myfico.com. If you notice, it says FICO right in the name of it. That's how we, tra we, uh, we uh, track our scores and see what the changes are from time to time. Other factors, employment, income, debt to income ratio, collateral, down payment, adverse credit report uh, items, all of that can be part of it. Now, I'm not a big fan of surprises when it comes to credit scoring. That's why I check mine almost every day. A little overkill, some people say. But you can get registered with myfico.com, and that way you don't have that, that question mark when you go in. And, and you really know what your true report is. That is the Your Credit Matters segment brought to you by MySoCalLender.com. Continuing our conversation, it's the monthly market report that we're looking at today. I can't even say this one. And I don't even know if it's a male or a female. My Claire? My Claire? My Claire? My Claire? All right. Bolton Smith. <laughs> Bolton Smith. There Senior you go. leader. And I can... How can you have a name, a first name like that and a last name? Bolton Smith. That's easy, <laughs> right? Senior leader of research, CoreLogic. We may see a little bit of an uptick in foreclosure rates in 2022. Boy, have they got uh, their forecasting has not been great. Just an uptick, though, from an extraordinarily low level. We're not expecting to see big increase. We expect delinquency rates overall on home mortgages to actually continue to remain quite low. I, I mean, would... one is an uptick, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, go from zero to one, so that's an uptick. Yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> you know, it's because there, there. Why would there be a, an uptick in foreclosure? Real estate values are going up. Mm -hmm. If you want a good job, you can get a good job right now. There's 11 mm -hmm. million of them open. You know, if you're not happy where you're working, why did Goldman Sachs lose so much money this last quarter, or or miss? I'd say lose. Why did they miss their projections this last quarter? They were paying retention bonuses, right? They want to make sure and keep good people. Has home price appreciation peaked? I'm going to say yes. Mm -hmm. You think so? Yeah. It, I mean, it's still going to go up, but just not as quickly as we've seen. And we don't want it to. No. Right? I mean, FHFA, that's my favorite. I'm, I I know I watch CoreLogic and S&P. The FHFA is my favorite just because it measures uh, home appreciation based on conforming loans. It's not taking in the jumbo loans and the exotic loans. So it peaked a little over 19%. What a shame. Now it's a little over 17. Right, that's, a, that's, that's horrible, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, think about that. So have we, have we peaked? I hope so. I think so. But who knows? But it's still, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Home price forecast for 2022. Let's look at the, well, we can look at Ivy, Zel Ivy Zelman. She's one of the great um, minds in real estate. She's saying 3% for 2022, national number. Mm -hmm. That's about a historic number. But I, the, the irony of this whole chart to me, who is it that's got the biggest bias on home prices? Right? The National Association of Realtors, I would think. Right? All, these, all the organizations on the chart have a bias. But the National Association of, of Realtors, they say 2.8%. Average is 52 now, I, I'm a big fan of the Home Price Expectation Survey. What is the Home Price Expectation Survey? They actually go out and survey, survey obviously, it's part of the name, One, at least 100 economists, uh, bankers, 
real estate professionals, and they put all of their data together, they're saying 2022 at 5.1%. It's still healthy. Yeah. That's about uh, 30, 40% above what the na uh, the average would be for the nationwide. Orange County, we're at 5.3 is our average over the last 60 years. So what am I going? I think I'm going the wrong way. I guess maybe I'm not going the wrong way. We got uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bolton Smith back again. I do think that 2022 will be another strong year in housing, albeit a bit higher mortgage rates. And we do think home sales will continue to rise and actually reach a 16-year high. Wow. Home sales. Mm -hmm. Now, there, there is one caveat on that one. Someone's got to put their house up for sale. Yeah, I was like, we need the inventory. <laughs> right? We need, need to have somebody putting their house up for sale. Now, Mary, you mentioned this earlier about days on market at national average, 18 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know that they, they, they did our chart here in, in different shades of blue. I think that's blue. And I can hardly tell what, what some of them mean, but I think it's 15 to 30 days for California. Is that the, gr the group? It looks we're like 15 to 30 days for most of the country. So how's it? It's, it's uh, average days on market is somewhere between is 18 on average. Mm -hmm. But we're saying we got a 2.1 month supply of inventory. I don't know exactly how that works. Existing home sales since 2014. Well, you know, we've been we've been seeing some good numbers here. I mean, we're we're looking back here, but we're did have a little bit of a drop in in uh, part of 2021 down in the early part of the year. Mm -hmm. That's to be expected. No one knew what the heck was going on at that time. Existing home sales year over year by by re existing home sales one percent. We're numbers are all every number we're looking at here shows housing to be a very very strong uh, a strong marketplace. Yeah, home sit new home sales are good. Existing home sales are good. Um, percentage by the price ranges. Now, this is a, a they put they do this chart new home sales percentage by price range. We can't use this chart because we're in California. <laughs> now, if this said by down payment amount, this would be this would be a better for us, right? Thirty one percent in the three hundred to three ninety nine category. I know San Bernardino and Riverside. You've got some properties that'll fit in there. But most of Southern California, LA County, Orange County, Riverside County, those are down payment numbers. Everything's selling fast though. Median months of completion to sold. A lot of stuff on on uh, on the home builders right now. Pending home sales, very very healthy. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you know this, Mary. I don't. What what? How do you qualify as pending home sale? Is it based on when contingencies are removed or just when the realtor goes in and says, this has got moved to pending? Is there a, a requirement there? I believe it just when it's the status has changed to pending. So, so it can be kind of um, arbitrary. Mm -hmm. So some realtors don't want to put it into pending. I wonder, and I, I don't know if you know this one, I I'm, pipe in if you do. I wonder that if it goes the day on market is based on listing to pending or listing to contract closed. I don't know. Percentage of distressed properties. Now, if you look at it, it's kind of funny when you look at this chart, distressed pro percentage of distressed property sales. That almost looks like a, a ski slope going downward. By 2012, percentage of distressed property sales, 35% in 2012. Now it's about 4%. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where those 4% are. Less than 1% <laughs> in November. Well, I mean, it's national, so they're not here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Home prices. So we're still we're still going up on the home prices year over year. These are all historic numbers. Now the number the, the charts that we're looking at, and yes, we have no problem sharing the charts with you. If you want, RJ at ronsegalradio.com. RJ at ronsegalradio.com. You can you can see them, or we, we have them on our, our uh, social media channels as well. But all of the different numbers show. That real estate is extremely healthy. So we go back and we say the same exact thing that I said before that we still kind of opened the broadcast with. What are you waiting for? Right? Are you waiting for property prices to go up or interest rates to go up? Both. You know, both. Yeah. Let's hold <laughs> off and see if we can. Now, 
I would imagine some of the realtors in, in your office, if you want the property prices to go up, they can, they'll, they'll accept high bids. Oh, yeah. Not a problem there. I'll take it. Right? So you can do that. If you want to give the seller that 18% now instead of waiting till the end of the year and getting that, paying that, you know, that'd be, it'll still save you money because interest rates are still lower. I'll allow it. There you go. As always, uh, we appreciate Mary coming in to share with us and give us a her perspective on what's going on in the real estate market. And as always, I thank you and ask you this to set your radio, first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Josh and Sean who are engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, Call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.